Okay, so I'm really excited about today's video because we're going to take a look at the Joe Rogan experience. We're going to take a look at a clip from a recent episode of Fight Companion, right? Where he and three or four of his comedy buddies from the world of stand-up sit around watching MMA fights. And the really exciting bit about today's clip that we're going to take a look at is we get a rare glimpse into the mindset what it takes, the esoteric knowledge that all of these household names of the world of stand-up normally shouldn't be sharing with the public. And if any of you are looking to get into stand-up, there are a few pointers in this clip that, you know, could be invaluable to you. First and foremost, the most important one that Sam Tripoli, Brian Callan, and Brendan Sharp all seem to follow, and this rule is unbreakable, you must get your nose as far up Joe Rogan's anus as physically possible, even when he's not asking you to. Okay, let's get into the clip which was posted by the fine people over at the Fighter and the Kids subreddit. That green room's great at the mothership, Joe. Oof, it's fun, that right? whole club Fuck. is gorgeous. Now, over at the Fighter and the Kid uh, subreddit, they are obviously focusing on Brendan Sharp quite a lot. And uh, I understand. I understand that you all think he should be suffering from such crippling imposter syndrome that he can't leave his house by now. But really, I don't think Brendan Sharp is the worst one. He may be the worst comedian, technically. But let's not forget that he is Joe Rogan's Frankenstein monster. He's only in this because of Joe Rogan told him he could do it. And in a way, being bad at stand-up, it's less cringe than these guys who have been wetting their tools for three decades. Joe Rogan and Brian Callen, you know, they know how to form a joke. They know how to deliver the punchlines. Their timing's good. They've memorized their entire hour-long set, and they're still not fucking funny! I understand that Brendan Sharp is not funny. I understand that he lies and embellishes all of his stories on his podcasts. But he's surrounded by people who've been perfecting the art of deception for the last 30 years. And for at least 20 of them, they didn't have to contend with podcasting and everybody recording everything they ever said. They've reduced it to an art form. And Brendan's desperately scrambling trying to imitate all of these psychopaths around him. And he's not smart enough to do it as well as them. And so the general public think that he's the worst. He's not. That green room's great at the mothership, Joe. Oof, it's fun, that right? whole club Fuck. is gorgeous. There's nothing, it's so you just You just Fuck. took everything that was great at the comedy store and then were like, I'm going to move here. <laughs> yeah, make it a little better. Yeah. Joe Rogan, by the way, who is completely responsible for Brendan Sharp. Brendan Sharp was his protege. He got him into podcasting and into stand-up. The way he won't let him perform at the mothership every time Brendan's with him now, which is not very often, seeing as Joe's moved to Austin, Texas, and Brendan's still back in LA, and every time the subject of Joe Rogan and the mothership comes up, he hints at wanting to perform there, he hasn't been able to because of timing and whatever. He's finally got into the mothership and they only let him in the green room. <laughs> I feel sorry for Brendan Sharp, I gotta say. A little bit. Not, not too much. Yeah. Dude, the, this the, is the main, your main room is just absolutely beautiful. If you want a really bad guy, here's Sam Tripoli. You know, the guy who says he's going to kill Mike David from Red Bar. <laughs> and beat up his wife. This guy's a proper psycho. Just listen to the way he talks. That green room's great at the mothership, Joe. Oof, it's fun, that right? whole club Fuck. is gorgeous. Main, yeah, your main fine. room is just absolutely beautiful. Is that... Fucking idiot Brendan complimenting Joe and the mothership. Your club's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Well, 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 Brendan Shaw trying to steal my moment. He must be working with that red bar guy. I guess I'll have to kill him too. Yeah, we did everything the right way. You know, we set it up the right way. It took a long ass time, and you know that that be just being in that green with, room with Schultz and everybody. And all... Schultz, eh? Mm, that's funny because I actually can't think of anything worse than being in a room with Andrew Schultz as he imparts his wisdom, telling you the most basic, obvious shit you've ever heard in your life in a tone that would suggest he's the first person who ever came up with it. You know what I think is that laughter is like the greatest medicine. You really think about it, laughter is good for people. I remember the first time I thought that to myself and I, I blew my own mind. What we do as comedians is basically the same as what doctors do with medicine, we do with laughter. 
<laughs> You're all that, talking shit. It was, I was like, so oh, good man. to be together. Oh, like man, I, it's so I fun miss laughing. That. I fucking miss that. Yeah, we that, don't get that. Now. Well, that's a problem. Like God, we... it's so depressing listening to Brendan Sharp and Brian Callen and all these other comics whine about how shit LA is and how how amazing what you did here in Austin is. It's fucking God. It's it's not happening. All right. I know that Brendan Sharp and Brian Callen, in their head, they think Joe Rogan is so stupid that he hasn't actually heard what they're saying, despite the fact that they keep saying it to him. They keep saying, oh, LA's not the same, man. It's not the same since you left. It's I love what you did with the mothership. It's amazing. He, they think in their head that if they say it enough times, uh, Joe Rogan's going to turn around and go, hang on a second, I had a great idea. Why don't you leave L.A. and come to Austin? You could, we would have a great time. It'd just be like the good old days. Uh, you, you could work for me at the mothership. It, it's not happening, right? And, and I know that that's at the back of their heads. I can see it. We had that at the store. Yeah, we did. Where it was like a fun hang. Where you would go, you know, you do your weekends on the road or whatever. But when you were in town on the weekdays, you get to hang out with your boys. Oh, we would laugh better. and nothing talk shit like and hug it. each other. Oh, yeah, all week long you could hang out with the boys, talk shit, hug each other. What the fuck? Maybe the problem is you're not 20 anymore, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn 34 this year. I'm married with kids, right? These guys, Brendan's 40. Or something like that. Brian Callen's 58, or whatever he is. And uh, <laughs> they are married. They have kids. Brian's got kids with two different women. Why do you need to be hanging out at the comedy store all the bloody time, hugging each other? What is this midlife crisis? Oh, on the weekends we were on the road, and then during the week you just did be hanging out with the boys, shooting the shit. What, that, that's not a real life. You know, I thought they all loved Jordan Peterson, these guys. <laughs> he wouldn't tell you that you should be hanging out with the boys, shooting shit. No, he'd be saying, telling you you should be wrestling with God or something, wouldn't he? Oh, that's very nice. You want to shoot the shit with the boys. Well, you can go to hell in a handbasket as far as I'm concerned. You know, Alexander Solzhenitsyn. So fun. So fun. God. And we got a lot of like really good up and coming people. Like the, the in open Austin, micers. yeah, they're great, bro. Yeah. The comics out here, man. Big shout out to them. I I saw some of these young guys. Because they're great hold each other writers. Well, if you build it, I know. Oh, now that's a sight to behold, isn't it? The big tough guy, Sam Tripoli, suckling at Joe Rogan's teeth. <laughs> Joe Rogan's like, oh, we so we got some good up and coming guys. Sam Tripoli immediately. What here in Austin? Amazing. Big shout out, God! They're 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 amazing, bro. How amazing are they, Sam? As amazing as the four of you that are sitting there. I gotta tell you, the way they memorize their lines. Anyway, I hope none of them go too far. I hope none of them cross any lines, eh, Sam Tripoli? I'm telling you, dude. You went he went too far. It's not cool. What he did, I'm gonna fuck him up for it. I'm gonna fuck up his wife too. She fucking did it too got some really amazing comics i hope they don't cross any lines because you gotta come up for air sometime you can't hide forever you're gonna come up for air dog you're gonna come up for air you're gonna come up for air dude Well, if you build it, they I come. Miss that. If you I build it, that. they come. And well, Joe built so it. Many so people there. Moved Is this not the most embarrassing thing in the world? Three grown men falling over each other to pay compliments to another grown man. Just listen to Brendan Sharp again there. It's amazing. Well, if you build it, they I come. Miss that. If you yeah. build it, they come. And well, Joe so built it. Many so people there. Have moved here. If you build it, they come. If you build it, they come. Because they didn't hear him the first time. If you build it, they come. And Joe built it till they came. Well, if you build it, they I come. That. If you yeah, build it, that. they come. And well, Joe so built it. Well, so many people have moved here just yeah, specifically exactly. because we, they know we have this two-night open mic program. And we also have door people at the store. They're or at, at the, uh, the, the Mothership, mothership rather. Oh, the, ah, ah, there's so much here. I can't even get through it. Uh, the first, This next bit is really weird when they start talking about the bouncers, the people who work on the doors. Uh, you're going to love this. Uh, but... Just the language they're using. They're talking about the door people, the, the, the staff that work at the mothership, right? And, and the, it's straight away, I don't know who said it, if it was Sam Tripoli or, or Brendan Sharp, but somebody said, yeah, they're savages, right? Sounded like Brendan Sharp, they're savages. 
Or, or was it Tripoli? I don't know. But the doorman of savages. And stop saying savages. You're not 18. Here, just yeah, specifically exactly. because we, they know we have this two-night open mic program. And we also have door people at the store. They're or at, savages. At the, uh, the, the mothership. mothership, rather. Now, I know this might be a problem with my brain, right? But I've never liked people who really immediately adopt new words and terms. And when I hear 40, 50-year-old men saying... They're savages. I just immediately, I think you're a fucking psychopath, right? You cannot adopt the lingo of the 18-year-olds and the, t the, the, the TikTokers, right? Uh, you just can't. Stop calling everyone bro, right? Stop. Okay, so this next part of the clip uh, is where Joe Rogan's talking about the things that they do, the way they run the mothership, the way they roll there, you know? And I found it, <laughs> well... I'll let you just watch it, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. See if you agree with me. And we also have door people at the store. They're or at the, uh, the, the mothership. mothership, rather, that all are comics. Yeah. So they auditioned in front of Adam to become a door person like with the their store. act. Yeah. So they had to have, like, promise as a comic. So the whole idea is, like, to have, like, a mentorship program and have a program where... You know, you can be a guy who's working the door and, you know, you've been doing open mics for a year. And next thing, you're hanging out at the bar with Andrew Schultz. Yep. Yeah, no thanks. Yep. And we're all palling around together. And there's this this vibe there. There's this sort of camaraderie that exists that makes you feel like you're part of something. So they hire the doorman. And uh, the, to get the job, you have to audition. You have to do a stand-up routine. Yeah, that's not mental in any way. I know what's going on here. This is exactly the same as that episode of Friends with Ross and Chandler, who uh, their friend Gandalf's coming to town, right? And they're going to go out and they're going to have a crazy night out. And uh, they're hoping that they might <laughs> get so drunk that they end up on a boat and some seals lick their face in the morning, right? This is the, what they're doing with the mothership. They think they can create the, uh, the, the spontaneity of uh, the comedy store in L.A. with Mitzi running it like, oh, you're pretty funny and... and, and I, they, they, they've spoken about this for years. I know exactly what they're doing, right? They think that they can recreate something that came from uh, an organic place. And I know that sounds pretentious, but that's exactly what they're doing. It's not the same. It's not a local comedy club. This is a place where people from all over the US, people from all over the world are flying in to see these comics and go to the mothership. The mothership, right? <laughs> it's not... It's not some local comedy show where people wander in off the street and sort of say, oh, let's see who's on tonight, right? It's never going to be the same. No seals are going to be licking your faces. Get over it. I could be wrong. I don't know. What the hell do I know? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you're just starting and this person just headlined Mass at Square Garden. It doesn't matter. We're all just comedians. And that's yeah. all you, brother. That's your thing. The same thing you did in L.A. In it's the... all you, brother. You did that. The same thing you did in L.A. You invented comedy. If you build it... They'll come and Joe build it. He build it and they came. Like you left and it's fucking. Well, it's everyone should try to adopt that because we need more comics and it's hard. It's hard to do. It's hard and it's hard to do when you you feel like you're getting shit on by your peers. Like you want support. It's so hard, bro. Want... It's... Oh, it's so hard, bro. Everything you say, I agree with. Want it support. It's so hard. Yeah, it's hard. And I don't feel like listen. There... There's a lot of funny people in L.A. They're they're great, man. I, you know, there's people like there's not funny. The crowds are just weird, and it's not the club's fault. They can't no. like make people magically change out what they find well, funny. Well, you bring no. The audiences in L.A. are reacting genuinely to everything. They're not a bunch of fucking nerds that have flown halfway around the fucking world to go and watch their favorite comedian perform, right? They're just people wandering in and going, ah, let's check out the comedy tonight. If they don't like it, they don't like it. But of course, all the massive geeks, all the fanboys that are flocking to the mothership, they're lapping it up. It doesn't matter what you say. They love it. I don't know. Again, what the fuck do I know? But I'm right, aren't I? Bring a good crowd to a place with good comics. Do you remember the shows you used to do? I'd yeah. walk into the green room. It'd be Rogan, Bill Burr, Segura, Sebastian Mascalco, David Tell, David Tell, Joey Diaz, Joey Diaz Tom, Joe, Joe, Tom Segura, Theo. It'd, it'd be the biggest comics ever, and they'd, it'd be the lineup. And I'd be like, this is the lineup I'm in? I will yeah. miss the That's a Tuesday night, my friend. That was, was a Tuesday. Amazing. All right. God, they're nearly being brought to tears from, through their reminiscing. Ah, I was there. I'd be the lineup would be Bill Burr and Joey Diaz, and that was a Tuesday. Get over it. 
Those uh, Joe Rogan and Friends shows that we used to do oh at the store God. in the main room were some of my favorite shows ever. People oh. just stop in, like, get up there, get up there. And just like, and so that's what we're doing here. You know, like we, any night you'll see Ron White, Shane Gillis. Okay, so uh, this last bit of the clip is where uh, Brendan Sharp uh, tells a very homo anecdote. And I mean that with no disrespect, you know, it's just very very gay his story which is uh, obviously a thing to be celebrated let's let's listen to it you remember when we did uh Jesus. you did rogan's friend at the improv and the power was off and we still did yes. stand up and my voice was gone yes yeah. i did stand up with just yelling with uh, just no, talking hold on. To with the candles that's great candy. joe do you remember that time when the lights went out at the comedy store but you just did your act anyway you got up there and the moonlight was bouncing off your bald head as you humped that stool and the, we had candles. It was so romantic, bro. Yeah. Legit candles. And we there was a, a generator that gave us one little light. Yep. There was one little like emergency light. We set that up. We we're going to cancel the show. And I was like, this would be fun. Like, let's have fun. And it was so it was fun. Dope. Everybody yeah, about as fun as a little girl sleepover. We had so much fun with the candles. And by the way, I heard Brendan say dope there. Never say dope. I know everyone says it now. And it's like, I feel like I'm the only person who won't say it. You don't call things dope. It's cool. You can say cool. That's fine. Everybody loved it. The audience loved it. It was so cool. That we're just doing stand-up with no microphone and you got to kind of see like how you use the mic and what you could do with no mic do you remember that we lit a fire out back and we had the marshmallows while we were all sitting in our sleeping bags yeah go home to your kids fellas all right that's enough for today i don't i don't hate these people you know that's the way to end the video i guess see you in the next one